At Online Med Ed, we walk you through every topic in detail so you're ready for the boards and the wards. Mood 1 combines two of the sections in the DSM-5, depressive disorders and bipolar. It makes more sense to me to see these on a spectrum and leave out the low yield diseases that exist in between. There are a few that are spelled out in the notes, but we've considered them too low yield to take up time in this lesson. I want you to see these diseases on a spectrum. The first spectrum is going to be up and down. So here's the middle-ish of the board, that's normal. And then on the left side is going to be depression. Right? This is gonna be mood down, sad, depressed. On this side of the board is going to be mood up. What I want you to see is that this spectrum exists. Way over here on the left, nothing moves. That super slow, the mood is depressed, no one's happy. On the right side of the board, things are going great. Talk, 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 move around, do all these things. It doesn't matter because both of them cause problems with productivity. Both of them impair function. The people who are up, moving around, zipping really fast, can't get things done. The people who are really depressed can't get things done. So what I want to do first is show you the two main diseases major depressive disorder and bipolar one, show you why it's poorly named, and then use them to compare each other on opposite sides of the spectrum. Finish off with the diseases in between. But the other thing you need to do is decide, are they presenting with catatonia, and name it with or without, and are they presenting with psychotic features? Just as someone could be mostly depressed but have a little bit of hypomania, or be really manic and have a little bit of depression, so too can all these diseases present with a little or a lot of psychosis. If you have only mood and no psychosis, it's the mood disorder. If you have only psychosis and no mood, it's the psychotic disorder. See more on the psychotic disorders like schizophrenia. But if you have mostly psychotic disorders and there's a little bit of mood, you have psychotic disorder with mood features, schizophreniform. If you have mostly mood with a little bit of psychosis, mood disorder with psychosis. So you see how these things can modify. And the other big thing is catatonia. It used to be in the DSM-4 that catatonia was a subtype of schizophrenia. No more. Catatonia, that waxy flexibility, you put a person into position and they don't move from that position that's more likely to be associated with mood, and in particular depression, than it is psychotic disorders. So now associate catatonia with depression, mood in general, and know that you can have a little bit of mood up, mood down in any disorder, and also know how you can fit in psychosis. It's more like nomenclature and the general idea. Let's talk about the individual diseases and make it more concrete. First thing we're gonna start with is major depressive disorder. It is defined by a depressed mood or a loss of interest called anhedonia. And the duration has been more than two weeks and you have at least five of the screen Siggy caps. What is Siggy caps? That's the patient presentation. S I G E. C-A-P-S. The last S stands for suicide. And before I tell you about CE caps, what I want to do is show you what you should be doing. This is the order of events in which they occur. The diagnosis is made clinically using CE caps in this pathology I put up here. Depressed mood, anhedonia, two weeks, and five of the screen. But when you make the diagnosis of depression, you have to assess for suicidal ideations. You can make the diagnosis of major depressive disorder without suicidal ideations. But what you do for that person right there in the moment is going to be dependent on how close to suicide are they. That is to say, the treatment for someone who has suicidal ideations. 
and has a plan and a means to carry out that plan, that person gets hospitalized. You compromise the relationship, you take away their rights, you PEC them, you put them in the hospital against their will, and you say, you know what, it's for your safety, too bad. You don't want to do that willy-nilly, right? You can seriously compromise your relationship with your patient if every time they say they want to kill themselves, you PEC them, and it's not going to open up. What if they're just venting or frustrated? What happens if they actually are contemplating it, but they don't really want to? They just want your help, and that's their way of asking. That is to say, if there are suicidal ideations, but there's no plan or no means to carry out that plan, I'm going to climb into a helicopter and crash into a building. Do you have a helicopter? No. All right. So if there are suicidal ideations and the plan doesn't make any sense or can't be executed or there is none, this person's still high risk for killing themselves. You don't want to let them go out and just die. So you contract for safety. You literally have them sign a piece of paper that says they won't kill themselves, but if they think about it, they'll call you instead. This maintains the relationship and gives them their rights. If there's no suicidal ideation and you're just going to treat chronically, and of course you can start these medications acutely, what you're going to pick is the SSRI or SNRI. We include other forms of antidepressants in the psych farm lesson. But the association of MAOI and tyramine, wine, cheese, hypertension, you just don't see those meds anymore. Tricyclic antidepressants are used mainly for neuropathic pain, not for depression. Because SSRIs and SNRIs are so clean, you might as well just use them. And the way it works is you start them on an SSRI. And you wait a week or two and you increase the dose. And you keep increasing the dose until you get the maximum tolerable dose. And then you treat for one to two months. At which point you decide, do you need another one? Or are you doing okay? All the while, you are going to be giving them psychotherapy. Drugs are first line, psychotherapy is good also, and a combo is gonna be the most effective. But the best treatment, but very rarely done because of its stigma, as everyone sees Jack Nicholson getting his head shocked while he's awake, is electric convulsive therapy. It is used in severe forms, that is refractory, catatonia, or psychosis. It causes amnesia. It looks brutal, but you sedate the person before you do it, and so it doesn't hurt at all. It is the best, but has a stigma against it. And especially when you can do something as benign as simply start an SSRI and see how they do in a couple of weeks, that's generally what patients prefer. All right, but that's how you treat depression. Wait a minute, why, why does this siggy caps? How do I identify it? All right, S is for sleep. I is for interest. G is for guilt. E is energy. C is concentration. A is appetite. And P is psychomotor retardation. Typical depression, formerly called melancholic, is going to have decreased interest, decreased guilt, decreased energy, decreased concentration, and of course, psychomotor retardation, and there may be suicidal ideations. Typical depression has less sleep and less appetite. So-called atypical depression has a change in the vegetative symptoms. That is, the ones I marked, sleep goes up, appetite and weight go up. Everything else remains the same in the sense that there is decreased interest, lots of guilt, decreased energy, decreased concentration, and psychomotor retardation with potentially suicidal thoughts. So see major depressive disorder as the slow moving, barely can move, can't get out of bed, can't motivate themselves, feeling down, but guilty about everything, even though they have no energy and can't sleep. That's what depression looks like, and it should be treated with SSRIs unless you're going to hospitalize and or contract for safety. Let's do the opposite side of the spectrum, bipolar 1, to follow it up. Bipolar 1 is terribly named because it is the manic predominant, how they break up the vestigial name. Manic predominant, what does that mean? It means 
that bipolar one is categorized by severe mania. If you meet the criteria, you are bipolar one. So it should just be called manic disorder, sometimes with depression. But it's called bipolar one. And in order to qualify, you have to have E plus three other symptoms and a duration greater than a week. What's E in the three other symptoms? Well, we have another mnemonic here. That is dig faster. which stands for distractibility, insomnia, grandiosity, flight of ideas, agitation, also what counts is activities, S is sexual exploits, T is talkative, E is elevated mood, and R is racing thoughts. These are going to be the people who think really highly of themselves. They never sleep. They're doing stuff all over the place, activities, having lots of sex, getting into all these projects, but they're so distractible, they don't finish any. These are the people who think they're awesome and take 17 classes when they only need five, but yet they fail all of them because they don't show up. They have an elevated mood, so they feel really good about it. They're feeling great when they're in this, but their function is going to be impaired because when it ends, they realize the catastrophe that they're left behind. So someone who's moving all over the place, talking a lot, jumping from topic to topic, from carbon emissions in China, two minutes later, they're talking about what they're gonna wear tonight to dinner, and it's 7 a.m., and a minute later, they're on the ceiling, running around in circles. These people are up, activated, full of themselves, and into everything, but finishing nothing. This is mania. When you first meet someone with mania, if they meet the criteria, you have it. But the first thing you want to do is rule out stimulants, especially cocaine, methamphetamine, prescription amphetamines. Then, you want to make sure they actually meet the severity of bipolar 1, so you rule out the less severe forms, bipolar 2, and cyclothymia. We'll talk about those next. In your notes, you'll see the very complicated way of approaching the treatment, which is almost truth. Three phases. The depressed phase, the manic phase, and the maintenance phase. But instead of learning all those details, I want you to see three scenarios that you're actually going to meet a bipolar patient and that you need to treat them for. That is going to be the agitated patient who is super manic in the ED. The safe drug to use in almost all phases, all the time, except if there's QT problems, is the antipsychotic. And then what you use chronically, that is the mood stabilizers. First, if they're agitated in the ER and you needed to sedate them, you put them down, use benzos you will see used the B52, haloperidol, lorazepam, diphenhydramine, usually IM. It's never the right answer on the test. It's too extreme. It's essentially chemical restraints. But the benzos can help person come down from the mania, enough for you to talk to them and find out what's going on. The antipsychotic, if you're going to pick one, it should be quetiapine. It can be used in all phases, manic, depressed, maintenance. But on the test, the bright answer for mood stabilizer is going to be lithium. Lithium has a terrible side effect profile, narrow therapeutic window, nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, causes lots of problems, but it also fixes the mood the best, and it's the first. If you can't use lithium for whatever reason, your next choice is going to be valproic acid. Other anticonvulsants like carbamazepine and lamotrigine are effectively equivalent to each other. So here's how I want you to see this. The first line agent is lithium. The second line agent is valproate. They cannot make you choose between carbamazepine and lamotrigine. So if you see them both, they're both wrong. And quetiapine is your backup antipsychotic. And you only use benzos, which is number five, in order to subdue a patient if they're too active. 
depression, moving slow, down, antipsychotics. Bipolar 1, mania, up, mood stabilizers. Now, if you break the board according to this low high mood, low mood, you'll see how I link the remainder of the halfway diseases. I put dysthymia on the left side of the board with major depressive disorder, and I put bipolar 2 on the right side of the board to be with bipolar 1. And I'm going to put cyclothymia down here because it's just a lesser version of bipolar 2. It's treated the same way. Usually it doesn't even require treatment. The cyclothymia patients are the people you hated in medical school. They studied 16 hours a day. They got all A's. They did everything right. They always had the energy. They were always at the parties. They did fantastic. And they never had any of the depression symptoms that was required for them to be bipolar 2. They weren't medicated. They just did better than you. They hated those people. Bipolar 2, though, you just got done with bipolar 1, is defined by hypomania. And at some point, you have had or will have a major depressive episode. It's interesting that bipolar 2, bipolar, two poles, is the one that's closer to the actual disease, but also that it's hypomania. You never quite get to full mania, yet they call it bipolar 2. Really, it's major depressive disorder with a little bit of mania. But it's called bipolar 2, so it's called by its name. When you find bipolar 2, hypomania, and a major depressive episode, what you want to do is rule out catatonia and rule out psychosis. Because if either are present, it is automatically bipolar 1. And the test loves to give you the scenario of someone's in a major depressive episode. They're on the left side of the board. You say, ah, I recognize that. I'm going to give them an SSRI. And in doing so, you reveal mania. That could be bipolar 2, but they're probably going to be severe in the presentation, so you get to be bipolar 1. Cyclothymia is bipolar 2, just not as bad. Dysthymia is sort of mini chronic indolent major depressive disorder. Dysthymia is going to be defined by a depressed mood within a two-year period or longer, but the duration was never more than two months at a time. You're going to see someone who's a little slow, a little down. They look hypothyroid, so you get a TSH to rule out hypothyroid. These are treated with SSRIs. Commit most of your time to major depressive disorder, SIGI caps, and know what to do if there's suicidal ideations in a plan or not. SSRI is the right answer. Combo therapy is better. ECT is best. Be careful of the question they ask. Bipolar 1 is mania. Dig faster. Need three of the symptoms. Roll out drugs like cocaine. And then choose a mood stabilizer. Lithium, then valproate, then carbamazepine or lamotrigine. And know that quetiapine can always be the right answer. There probably isn't because one of the other ones are going to be there also. That is mood one.